Howdy, welcome back to another tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to make jump scares because I made another horror video, so let's keep the horror stuff going. Uh, yeah, let's get right into that. So jump scares are not hard to make. First, we need a box. So let's add a part. Let's make the material neon so it doesn't reflect anything. And we'll make the color black. Then we'll just do this. Actually, don't forget to add a little guy for size reference, a little block avatar. All right. So we'll just build like a little cube thing kind of around him. You do control D to duplicate parts. And it does not have to be perfect because this is where the camera is going to go when the jump scare starts. All right, so you have this. So when you get jump scared, the camera is going to be in here. So you have like an all black area where the monster will be. So highlight all those parts, anchor them, and you can put them in a folder. We're going to do jump scare thing now we need the camera so we'll just duplicate this back wall actually we'll add a new part we'll just add a part we'll name this jump scare cam we'll do show orientation indicator this is the front we'll just do this and we'll put this part inside of this box so if you look from where the camera is you just see this black box so make sure you anchor your jump scare cam and you can just stick that inside a jump scare thing We'll name all these parts wall we have wall jump scare cam actually if you want to make it neater you can put the walls instead of their own folder and just do walls so you have walls jump scare cam now we just need to add our monster that's going to jump scare us so we'll just use a simple humanoid rig like this little guy rotate him around actually no we're going to use a really handsome person perfect so if you guys don't know how i added him there's a free plugin called load character i made a plugin video so this is probably in there i don't know i'll i'll check but yeah just use this to spawn him you can use a normal rig just make sure the primary part is the humanoid root part otherwise you'll have problems animating it so put this little guy in front of your camera and for our camera just to make this easier i'm gonna add i'm gonna, yeah my hide orientation indicator i'm gonna add a surface light to this and i'm gonna change the lighting type to be future so you can see the lines went away on this box. And then I'm just going to change the range of the surface light to be up. And I'm going to turn the angle all the way down. I'm going to then scale this camera to be a little bit smaller by holding Alt and dragging. Now you can see exactly where the camera is hitting, which is my face right there. So we'll just rotate me. So I'm a little more neat. And we can just hide this underneath the camera. We'll put this little guy inside the jump scare thing, and we can anchor this humanoid root part. Now we have to animate the jump scare. So go to Avatar, press the Animation Editor, and click on the dude. Then press this little plus icon, press Add All Body, and now we just have to add some keyframes. So you can just right click here, add keyframe, and do that for every body part. So we'll do head, left arm, left leg, right arm, and right leg. So now you have your starting point. And now we can begin animating. So I'm just gonna drag him underneath the box just so you can't see him at all. And this is our camera. So we need to make him jump in front of the camera in a scary way. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but I'm gonna go frame by frame like this. I'll start with animating the torso first before I animate anything else. By the way, you press R to switch between position and rotation. So we have like this little bounce. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy a few frames and this is going to give him a little shake. So that works. I'm just going to paste it all the way to the end and I'll copy this frame, paste it. So we have one second and it's this little like bounce that works. Now we can animate the arms, whatever else we want to animate. So just make it look a bit better. I'll make the head start down as if it's reacting to the movements. Just making him look like super shaky is the goal. And you, once you have a few keyframes, you could just copy and paste them. And this looks janky, but it will do. Now, we don't need to do the legs, but you can do the arms if you want. 
I'll make it so his arms come up, but I'm not going to do every frame because you don't actually see the arms for a good part of the animation. And there we go. We have our janky jump scare animation. So now we just need to export this animation. Uh, let's export it as an action and we'll just do publish to Roblox. You can name this whatever. I'm going to do RK jump scare and save. Then you'll get this little ID. Make sure you uh, copy this or put it in a notepad, just somewhere where you'll see it. We're going to need this later. And now we can close our animation editor. Well, actually, make sure you save first. Now you can close it. Inside a replicated storage, make a folder. Name that folder Jump Scare Animations. And inside of there, just insert an animation. Then take that ID that you got from earlier and paste it inside the animation ID. It will get shortened to just be Roblox Asset ID and whatever your numbers are. And don't forget to name it. So we'll do RK Jump Scare, scariest jump scare ever. And while you're at it, just look for a jump scare sound. I'm going to use this really funky jump scare sound. I just inserted it. I'll put it inside of Starter GUI and just name it Jump Scare Noise. Now, inside of our Starter GUI, we just need to make a few things. We need to insert a screen GUI. Inside of that screen GUI, insert a frame. Make the anchor point 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. Make the size 0 0.5. Well, actually, no, make the size 1. 0, 1, 0. Make the position 0 0.5 by uh, 0 0.5 and then just make the background color black. Then you can just name this frame uh, black frame. Then inside of our screen GUI we can just do jump scare stuff. That's our name. So we'll just disable the visibility on this frame. And we can insert a script into Star GUI, a local script, and name it Jump Scare Hand, not Handler, Handle. There we go. So our first variable is going to be player's camera. So we'll do local cam equals game dot workspace dot current camera. Next, I'll get the animation. So I'll do local arcade jump scare anim equals game dot replicated storage dot jump scare animations. Actually, replicated storage. Wait for child jump scare animations. Wait for child RK jump scare. Next, we'll get our little humanoid, our RK guy that is inside the jump scare thing. So we'll do local RK model. Not that's not how you spell model. <laughs> equals game the workspace. Wait for child jump scare thing. Wait for child. Uh, wait, that worked. I don't know why I deleted that. Wait for child RK games or whatever your model's name is. So that little model here that we animated just reference that. Now we just need to add our black frame, our jump scare sound, and we'll just add a few other variables for the animation. So I'll do the sound, the sound first. Local jump scare sound equals script dot parent dot jump scare noise. I'm gonna change jump scare no uh no yeah we'll do jumps. Scares uh, noise instead, and I'll just add a wait for child, just so there's no possible bugs. This is wait for child itis, but a lot of my uh, tutorials just kind of crap themselves. You should be fine not putting a wait for child here, but I'm not gonna risk it. Actually, scratch that. I'm just gonna remove this last wait for child. This should be fine. All right, we need to get our models humanoid, so we're gonna do local RK humanoid equals RK model find first child humanoid. And now we need to load the animation to that humanoid. So we could do local anim equals RK humanoid load animation. Animation, uh, no, RK jump scare animation. And load animation directly to the humanoid is deprecated. So we actually have to do RK humanoid wait for child animator load animation. And if you go and type this, you'll see it's no longer deprecated. So this works. So let's add an event to trigger our jump scare. So instead of replicated storage, just add a remote event and do RK jump scare event. Then inside of this script, you can put this anywhere. We're going to do local event equals game that replicated storage wait for child RK jump scare event. 
then below everything we can do event dot on client event connect function and this is where we'll put all our code for our jump scare so just to test i'm gonna do test uh below everything i'll do test dot oh my voice just died test i wait uh 10 anim play so let's just run the I forgot I'm a moron. You can't do that. It won't work because it's on the client. So if we run the game and actually go over here, now we should see if it does this, uh, something. And it works. So our jump scare animation is successful. I cannot believe I tried to show a client thing on the server. I'm so dumb. So for this camera, let's click it, set transparency to one and turn surface light enabled to be false so there's no more light then we can just uh, go to your starter player go to name display distance and put it to zero so you won't see this arcade games name in your game so we can actually begin our animation programming so at the top we'll just do cam dot camera type equals enum dot camera type dot scriptable so we can do cam dot c frame equals and we need to reference our jump scare cam, which is inside of here. So we'll just do local jump scare cam equals game dot workspace. Wait for child jump scare thing. Wait for child jump scare cam. So we could just do jump scare cam dot C frame. Then we'll do jump scare noise play. And above that, we'll do anim play. Then it's about a second for our jump scare, so I'll do test that wait. Uh, 0 0.8. Then I'll do. We forgot the reference to black frame. All right, we'll do local BF for black frame equals script dot current dot. Uh, where is it? Uh, jump scare stuff dot black frame. And. We'll just do bf dot visible equals true jump scare noise dot or you can let it play through but I'm gonna stop it. So let's just see what this looks like if I fire that event. So insert a part. Name this part touch part. Uh, may, we'll make transparency a little bit less and I'll make it a vibrant green color. Disable can collide. Keep on can query and can touch. Anchor this part. And now we have to make it so when you touch this, it will fire that event and jump scare the player. So let's put this over by our spawn location. And instead of a uh, server script service, let's insert a script and do jump scare part handler. Now you just have to reference the part. So we'll do local part equals game at workspace dot uh, touch part. And we just need to do part dot touch connect function and put hit as our parameter then we could do local player service equals game get service players so instead of player service I'm actually just gonna do players and we could do if hit find first child humanoid or hit is a humanoid then wait actually we have to do hit dot parent then we'll do local player equals players get this no get character no get player from character there we go hit that parent whoops hit that parent and just to test it i'll do print player dot name so if we go to test this and walk through that part you'll see my name's been printed a bunch of times let's make it only print once so at the top we'll just add a bool, local touch equals false. And we'll just do if touch double equals false then. And here at the bottom, when it prints our name, we'll do touched equals true. So if we're lucky, there will only be one touched. And yep, there's only one name. So it was only touched once. Now all we have to do is fire that event, which is easy. We'll just do local event equals game dot replicated storage dot I already forgot the name of the event oh okay jump scare event 
and instead of printing the well actually we won't act we won't remove anything we'll just do event fire client and we'll do player so that will fire it to our specific player player jump scare and if we want at the end of here we could kill the player by doing local player equals local no player game dot players dot local player the bottom we could do player dot you uh character dot humanoid dot health equals zero and we can also yeah this is fine the way it is we don't have to change anything else so if we're lucky this code will work it will jump scare the player kill them so let's touch that part that actually worked pretty well you'll see that when you respawn they're glitched as hell so let's fix that so right here we'll just do we'll copy this code from here paste it here and do custom instead of scriptable and then for our ui just so you don't have that weird thing at the top we'll just do jump scare stuff ignore gui inset and there you go that right there is a simple jump scare that's actually kind of effective So if you enjoyed today's video, you let me know. I don't know if this is going to work a second time. Yeah, it doesn't. It's one time jump scare. I don't know. You don't have to make it kill the player unless you want to. But yeah, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, I'm glad. Uh, I plan to upload more soon. I always say that, but I really need to get on it. Uh, thank you to my Patreon supporters. And I think I have a YouTube membership supporter person. I don't know. Thank all. Thank you all to people's yes. Anyway, you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to brush your teeth. Uh, I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye-bye.